All right, this is the weekend every year where it's in between the championship uh, of the NFC and the AFC and the Super Bowl, so there's no football action. You don't have a lot going on. You're looking for something to do. There's nothing left than but to go see a movie. And there are three new movies out this weekend. Our Mix 106 movie critic, Willie Waffle, has seen all of them to tell you whether or not they're any good. And we have some big names. Once again, uh, we have J-Lo in The Boy Next Door. We've got uh, From the Mind of George Lucas, The Animated Story, and Strange Magic, and Johnny Depp and his mustache star in Mordecai. Will somebody tell Johnny Depp to shut up about the mustache? <laughs> God, I mean, the whole Mordecai movie, it's all about the mustache. Oh, he's talking about his mustache. He's asking people to tell them what they think the mustache looks like. He's getting into fights with his wife about the mustache. He's trying to form a brotherhood with other guys who have mustaches. I mean, Johnny Depp seems to think that this is the height of comedy. You will not. So if they were going to make such a big deal about the mustache, why didn't the marketing department do something smart and release this in Movember? That would have been awesome. But, you know, there's a lot of things that weren't well thought through with this movie, and that was one of them. So is Johnny and Depp getting – I mean, it used to be the point if Johnny Depp was in a movie, I would go see it. He's now getting to the point where, wow, I think he's just in it for the money because I just this past weekend uh, watched Transcendence. And the same thing, it's like, okay, this is a Johnny Depp movie. It's supposed to be good. Where's the good part coming? Well, you know, he really likes these esoteric kind of out there kind of stories. And, and that's what this is. I mean, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it's out there. They're trying to be goofy. They're trying to be wacky. And it's just not working. I mean, you know, it, it's got all this slapstick that flops along. You've got all these moments of Randy humor that are falling flat. You've got double entendres that are missing an entendre. I mean, it's just <laughs> nothing about this movie is working. You know, if he keeps this up, he's going to esoteric himself right out of the movie business. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can only make so many of those Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And not that it's going to matter because he is so filthy rich anyway. That's right, you know. So I'd say half a waffle, and he's going to keep laughing as he goes off and parties with his 23-year-old fiance. Dang it, I had such high hopes for this movie, too. <laughs> really? I did. <laughs> okay. I thought, hey, this might be just quirky enough that it might be funny, but uh, apparently not. No. All right, what's our other movie? Well, you know, how about The Boy Next Door? This is the one where J-Lo is getting her groove back. Oh, yeah. You know what? And I, just, I told you this before when we were, we were talking earlier before we were on the air about boyhood. And luckily, the only reason now that I would see this is because of J-Lo and getting to see her with not very many clothes on. Because any movie that has the word boy on it, I am so jaded now <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not going to see it. But, you know, hey, J-Lo might be worth it. Well, you think nothing happens in boyhood. I'll tell you everything happens in the boy next door. <laughs> oh, this is a crazy, over-the-top, melodramatic, camp-tastic story, okay? You know, she's the, divorce, the, the high school teacher going through a divorce, and this hot young stud moves in next door, and, well, he looks really good with that tight T-shirt on. And one dark, lonely, steamy night, uh, the young stud sweet talks his way into J-Lo's heart. But the next day she realizes this is a horrible mistake because even though he's almost 20 years old, he's going to be a student at her high school. So she tries to break up with him, and that's when it turns out he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> and this is not going to go well. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Oh, God, it's so bad that you love it because, you know, it's just got all this suggestive campy dialogue in all the right places, and, and you're just being driven crazy as J-Lo makes bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and the kid who plays the 20-year-old, let's just say he's not showing up on Oscar night unless he starts dating <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. I'm going two waffles. <laughs> you know, you, you, have, you have to say that with J-Lo, and I like the way you say bad decision after bad decision, it kind of mirrors her, her you know, love life. It's because she goes she goes for the superficial instead of the, the true-to-the-heart kind of guy. Um, all right, our final movie this week. I'm holding out hopes because so far nothing is there. You're holding out hope for Strange Magic? Oh, you poor man. I, well, I mean, it's a family movie at least, and there's some big names attached to it. But it's just so ugly. I mean, just the animation looks ugly and yucky and sterile, and, and it's from the brain of George Lucas, and, and he has stated in interviews this week that he wanted to make a fantasy movie for 12-year-old girls, the way he felt that Star Wars was a fantasy movie for 12-year-old boys. And I am not a 12-year-old girl. Maybe that's the problem. 
I think that is the problem because it's just a mess if you're not. I mean, you know, it's these two princesses and they're in a fairy tale land and they're trying to find true love, but one of them has to dump her fiance because he's cheating on her, and then he wants to get some other fairies in the forest to find some sort of magic love potion to force her to love him again. And I'm just like, this is crazy. I don't understand. There's way too much going on here. <laughs> I don't understand from the mind of George Lucas, and then you say bad animation. How is that possible? Well, because, you know, he just kind of gave them the story, and then they ruined it from there. All right, so they don't use any of Lucas' films? I don't think so, and if they do, ooh. Really? Yeah. All right, so what do you give it? Half a waffle. Wow, we went from such a great week last week where all the movies were pretty good to awesome, and then this week, nothing. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, what do we have next week? Well, next week, I'll tell you what. We have the Kevin Costner movie, Black or White, which is not bad. I was going to say, there, there's no way that... I mean, that thing looks fantastic. And right now, Kevin Costner is at a point in his acting career, and we talked about this with our top ten movie picks, where he had three movies out. None of them were critically acclaimed, but all of them were very close to my top ten just because he was in it. Yeah, no, he does He does a really good job. And then you've also got that movie, The Loft, which just looks dreadful. Well, and it shouldn't. there shouldn't be any good movies next week because we all want to see the Seattle Seahawks kick the hell out of uh, Brady and Belichick next week. The Cheatriots? Yeah, there we go. The, I'm just trying the, to deflatables. come up with something. The, the, the deflatables. The, the deflatables. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to you next week, Willie. All right, talk to you next week.